Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be going over how to set up WirePod on your Windows PC if you've got an old laptop laying around or if you just want to run WirePod on your home PC that you use every day. Uh, it will use a little bit of resources, but it does work really well from what I've heard. So I'm going to run through the setup process today for getting your uh, Anki or DDL vector back up and running. If you're seeing this Anki screen or you see the little square with the V in it uh, and you can't get your vector to come back to life, this is what you will need to do to set up WirePod server running on your Windows PC. So if you don't mind, it would really help the channel out. Just drop a like, drop a subscribe, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer as many comments as quickly as possible. And I've already gone over the full Raspberry Pi WirePod setup in the rest of the playlist. So if you are interested in setting up WirePod on a Raspberry Pi, I have videos for that as well. So first things first, what you need to do is basically open up a browser and just type in your Google search bar, install WirePod. Hit enter. <clears throat> that will pop up this Kirkry123 WirePod. Click that link. It's usually one of the first ones. Then you're going to scroll down to the installation guide. And then this gives you all the prerequisites for the things that you need to do with the <clears throat> Uh, actual vector we're gonna do that first so what you need to do to prepare the vector to set up WirePod is hold down the back button for 15 seconds the screen will go out here and then once you've held it down long enough the back lights will light back up again this is going to get the vector onto stock 0 0.90 firmware and when you see the two darker blue bars back here that's when you know that things are booting up and going back to the stock firmware and here's those two blue bars that we wanted to see all right from there what we want to do is just double check that we got onto the right firmware so you double press the back button while the vector is on the home charger get to the pairing screen and then lift the arms up that will reveal the, there you go, 0 0.90 firmware. Then we just want to take the vector, whoops, you don't want to do that. So get back to the pairing screen, lift the arms up, and we want to clear the user data. So what you do is you scroll the little wheel down to move the arrow up here on the screen to clear user data and then lift the arms up and down then it will say confirm scroll the little wheels down again to get you to the confirm and then lift the arms up and down the vector will reset and now the vector should be ready for the 1.8 version of firmware that will allow wirepod to run on this little vector uh, you'll also have the user data all cleared out which you need to have done so now that the bot is rebooting we're just going to go over to the um, browser again and scroll down to the installing WirePod. So we don't want to go to the Linux and Mac section. We want to continue down to the second section of the guide. Here we go. So guide to Windows 11. And we're just going to follow these really simple instructions. <clears throat> so basically, we just have to download an installer uh, set up WirePod and we're just going to go through these instructions. So make sure no other WirePod instance is are running on your network. So if you do have WirePod running on say a Raspberry Pi, make sure that those are off or it will not work properly. So number two, make sure no other devices on the network are called escape pod. So this is where I feel like there's definitely a discrepancy in the instructions here. So what you really need to do right now is go to your computer settings, click on the little bar down here, go to settings, go to system, and then scroll down on the left to about. You need to go to this little button here and say rename this PC. It will pop up a window and you need to name the PC escape pod. If you don't do this, your escape pod will not work. So you click next and it's going to want to reboot your computer. 
you restart now and then we're going to go back to that browser that we were at with the installation instructions all right so we're back to the original installation instructions page we've changed the computer name to escape pod now we're going to head to the latest release page click the link it will pop up this WirePod Windows. Scroll down to the WirePod Installer EXE. It may be a different version here because they do update this every once in a while. So we click that. It will begin the download. Then we just want to go back. And as you can see here, download the WirePod Installer EXE from the release page and run it. <clears throat> and do not download the zip file. The zip file will automatically be downloaded in the installer exe file. So uh, if you have any issues, just click run anyway, follow the instructions, open WirePod if it isn't open already. So we're just going to go through the installation instructions. It's done downloading. So I'm just going to click here, click the actual file that will pop open an installer window. Click yes. And here's your WirePod installation um, options. So automatically launch WirePod after login. So this will launch the server. Every time you log into your computer, you can change the directory that you want to save it in if you have multiple hard drives. And then just leave the configuration port as 8080 unless you know what you're doing and you want to change it to a different port. You just click next. It's starting to download. This goes pretty quick. I'm just going to wait for that to finish. All right, and that has finished and pops up this window, start WirePod after exit. So I'm just going to exit. Hopefully this will start the WirePod server. All right, so it did. So if you look down here on the bar, it's got this little window and it says, WirePod is now running in the background. You must set it up by going to this IP address in a browser. So your IP address is probably going to be different than mine because this is assigned by the home router. So um, it will be different on yours, but basically just click this open browser button. And this is what you wanna see. You wanna see the WirePod setup. This is where you're going to choose your connection option. If you have a dev bot or an OSKR bot, you can choose this option, but otherwise just leave it on escape pod. If you want to change the language to a different language, you can choose from a variety of languages. And then the weather API is where you will set up your API for weather. So your vector can answer your weather conditions and your uh, location. And then the knowledge graph is where you set up your knowledge, uh, such as ChatGPT, if you see here, OpenAI, that will ask you for your Knowledge Graph API, and you put that all on here. I'm going to just leave this as none for right now, but to get the actual server initialized, you do have to click this button here, Submit Settings, and this will start the initially initialization process of the server. So WirePod is running, but it still has to be initialized, and that's what's going on here. So this is technically where if you did put any of those APIs in for the weather and the chat GPT and all that stuff, this is where it would be setting up that model and downloading all those prerequisites it needs to run that. All right. And so it says setup is complete and then it redirects you to this WirePod interface. So if you look here, you can see server settings. This is where you can go back in and change your APIs or update them if you wanted to change them. Bot settings. This is once you've connected your vector after the first time, you will go in here and this is basically where you connect it to change the eye color, change the volume. It kind of works just like the old uh, vector app from Anki. So from there, we're just gonna go back and go to the bot setup. So we've already gotten our bot on the correct firmware. We've already gotten our wire pod running. Now we just have to click on this link to set up our vector. This will bring up the pair window with vector and you have to have Bluetooth on the device that you're using to pair with vector. So you um, go to your vector, double click the back button to get it into the pairing screen. Then you click the pair with vector button. That'll pop up your Bluetooth window you click your vector, pair, then that should reveal the pairing code. 
698314. You put that right in here. And click enter pin. That should connect the vector. And so here it's going to ask for your Wi Fi information. So once you put in your Wi Fi credentials, it will automatically start updating vector. And your vector screen on the wire pod side should look like this it will be a green bar that slowly updates. Your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection should be good, and your vector should look like this with the little cloud and the little rotating arrows. So just wait for that to finish, and then we will continue on. So this might be the slowest part of the process. It's really just dependent on your internet connection on how fast the update process will take, but as you can see, it's going pretty slow for me. All right, it looks like this is finally finishing up here. All right, so once the bar finishes, it will disconnect from Vector and Vector will start to reboot. So once Vector boots back up, you'll see this little V inside the little square phone thing, whatever it is. So you have to repair with Vector. I know we just did this, but double click the back button to reveal the pairing screen. Click the pair with Vector It'll pop up your window again. Click your vector and click pair. I don't know why it did that. So it basically did that because I had already paired, so it just wanted me to re pair again. So now I have the activate button. It's showing this on my vector screen. I should just have to press activate. Hopefully. All right, so this should pop up after you click the activate button. You just choose your time zone and the different settings you want here. I want to have Alexa enable on mine, and I'm not going to share anything with the Digital Dream Labs. Save the settings. And Vector should be giving you your Amazon Alexa code. You go and punch that in your Amazon account. You should also have a big green check mark right here. All right, so I am inputting the code into my Amazon account. You basically just have to put the code in and say that you're allowing Alexa to be active on this little guy. And there we go. You're ready to use Alexa. And Vector should come alive. Boom, there we go. Hey, Vector, what time is it? There we go. So Vector is running on WirePod. It is set up on a Windows PC. If you've made it this far along in the video, if you don't mind just dropping a subscribe and a like and a comment uh, how I did, it would be really awesome. And uh, thank you for watching.